going on? We found a glow stick. There you go. You want a symbol of the ephemerality of British popular culture. That's a really pretentious thing to say, what I just said, isn't it? It's a glow stick. So this was a location for three or four of uh, the, the vanguard clubs of a period of music that began you know, in the, uh, the late 80s, the second summer of love. Today, we're um, going to go inside the old nightclubs, which I've been in many times. One of the things that I uh, was excited to do was bring in other opinions and ideas onto me being here and just this changing site. The mid-90s, which is kind of enshrined in British pop history as being largely about Noel Gallagher shaking hands with Tony Blair. Actually, the truth of the matter is that there were as many, if not more, people involved in clubbing and involved in dance music in that period as there were going to Britpop gigs. It's just that it hasn't left as much of a lasting mark on British popular culture. Here we go. Oh. You might have heard of this guy. Hey, it's Fat Boy. No one wanted that. Oh, no, that's amazing, isn't it? You thought even he might have wanted, wanted it. Leave it behind. As an artist, I'm interested in the locations of these clubs that don't seem to be on the heritage radar of what's happened on the site so far. And the, the, the history and preservation of the site really seems to be before the war. And I'm kind of interested in, well, if that something is perhaps being lost, that in 200 years they'll, they'll look back and think that should have be a protected thing. Is that that's like a lighting control or a mixer or something like that? Wow. This could have been up here. Come around here. So would that have been the DJ booth or something up there? Because it seems unlike the, it seems more like the people would have danced on here. If you want a glimpse into the uh, incredible glamour of clubbing, this is the VIP area for DJs. This looks to me like it was the DJ booth. Bits of a mixing desk up there as well. It's all the doors are hanging off, isn't it? Every door got kicked off as they left. Here it was, there you go, Secrets of Those Closing Party, the terrace canvas, which is what Bagley's uh, became. Once again, the uh, ineffable glamour of, uh, of Britain's DJs there in full effect. You don't realise how much a club is, is the people that come to it, rather than the building that contains it. It's very hard to get a feel for what it was like, in a weird way. You remove the people from it, that's I suppose what clubbing is ultimately about. See, if you compared to if we were in an empty museum... Yeah, absolutely. It would well, still feel you're... like the yeah. same thing. The architecture of hedonism <laughs> is actually shabby four walls and then it's... It is, yeah, and it, the rest of the architecture of hedonism is largely inside the hedonist's brain, isn't it? It's hard to place. It is really hard to place. There's a pair of uh, underpants here. It's a good closing party. Just film, I don't know what it's I don't know what it's all. And a wig. And there's VIP wristbands here, look at that. I think aspects of Bagley's are totally worth preserving, you know, for future generations. They can see what it was like to be a clubber in the mid-90s. Whether that's a particularly edifying prospect or not, I don't know. <laughs> These are still really nice. All British pop culture is worth preserving in one form or another. It seems that Graham has been presented with an opportunity here to look after some fairly ephemeral bits of, of an era in British pop culture, but often the, what appears to be the most ephemeral stuff can tell you the most about a time and can have the most resonances.